Hi, I'm John Filardo, Vice President for Government Relations of the American Chiropractic Association. Standing here with our good friend and colleague, Rick Miller. As you can see, we're outside the Capitol today. And Rick, uh, this looks like it's going to be the culmination, uh, one way or another, of, of health care reform as we talk to our viewers here on Thursday afternoon, March 18th. Uh, boy, a lot of things are moving today. John, it's nail-biting time here. And I'm not talking about fingernail biting time. I think some of these members up here in the House of Representatives are chewing through those kind of nails that you have to drive with a hammer. And speaking of hammers, I think the White House has whipped out some. I think they're smashing some, uh, some thumb, thumbs and uh, banging on some kneecaps, doing most anything they can to get the votes they need. Half jokingly, uh, they're probably getting ready to waterboard a few members if that's what it would take to get these final votes to get them across the finish line. You're right. Well, we talk about what it will take. Uh, we just learned within the last half hour uh, that President Obama has postponed his trip again, again. Uh, overseas uh, in order to stay in Washington uh, through this vote. He, as you know, he was scheduled to go uh, to Asia starting on, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, we just learned that uh, he's now postponed that trip until June. So that is, uh, uh, that is an indication that the president is, <laughs> not that he hasn't before, right. but he's taking this seriously and that he's going to be in town and, as you said, twist some arms of legislators over the weekend. Absolutely. John, when they first passed the House version of health care reform, it took them 220 votes. That's what they had to have. That's what they got. Now there are some uh, vacancies in the House. They only need 216 but they don't have that vote yet. They don't have those members lined up. I think as soon as they do, this thing is gonna move forward. Now, right now, today, it looks like we might have a vote on this thing. The House will stay in session over the weekend, and it could occur on Sunday. And if they can't get it through, I think this whole thing collapses. Now, my, my, my surmise, that at the end of the day, I think they'll get the bill through the House. And of course, what they're talking about is passing the Senate bill intact and through a very complicated, highly unusual procedure, at the same time take a collateral action which incorporates, through what's known as a budget reconciliation bill, a number of modifications and changes. It's a very strange process uh, I don't know that it's really going to be the effective fig leaf that they might view it uh, as being. Uh, it seems to me that it's pretty clear that they are sort of having to stretch the rules a little bit to get this thing through. But again, I think they'll do everything they can to, to make this vote happen, and I think he'll get it at the end. You're right. This is the call, the so-called demon pass uh, uh, resolution that uh, they want to bring up so the members don't have to vote on the Senate bill itself. You're right. They vote on the reconciliation package. It's not so much that it's unusual, uh, but it's never been used. Uh, not for, for anything of this magnitude. Not of anything of, of this magnitude, uh, as, you, as you said before. Now, we did learn this morning also uh, some numbers. Uh, the, the leadership, the Democratic leadership, is waiting for some numbers from the Congressional Budget Office uh, to go forward. They got some of the numbers this morning. I just wanted to uh, let our, our viewers know uh, this bill, the overall bill, will cost $940 billion uh, over 10 years. That was sort of the number that they were hoping for, something along those lines. And it will reduce the deficit uh, by $130 billion uh, during that period. They are hoping that these are the types of numbers uh, that will give members uh, the, not only the cover, but will give them the momentum uh, to vote for this thing. Well, I think for some people it, it may be what they need uh, to get that vote, for them to be able to give up their vote for this thing, to be able to say, uh, presumably with a straight face, that this thing is going to save some money, that it's going to be a uh, reduction to the deficit over an extended period of time. Now, again, whether you believe that analysis or not, uh, I'm not sure that matters. That's what CBO looks like they're going to formally say. Uh, looks like they're going to back up their mm -hmm. informal guidance with something formal that says that. You know, if they manage to pull this thing over the finish line in the House, uh, what that really means is that the Senate bill 
will have been agreed to by the House. Now, the Senate bill already passed the Senate, so when the House agrees to the Senate bill, the Senate bill will become law as soon as the President signs it. So there will be a health care reform law enacted if the House acts on Sunday, for example. The changes the House wants, however, that are incorporated into the reconciliation package, those changes, that select group of changes, that has to go back to the Senate for consideration. And uh, I think that's going to be a very contentious uh, uh, process over there in the Senate. I think they'll get the reconciliation changes through, but the Republicans in the Senate are going to make the Democrats pay a it heavy it, political it, price. It won't be a fast process by any no. means. Uh, you know they already have a game plan over there uh, by loading this thing uh, up with amendments, uh, points of order, uh, whether or not uh, things are germane in here. A lot will depend on the Senate parliamentarian, a civilian, if you will, Absolutely. not an elected member of the Senate, of course, and on whether or not uh, items in that package are germane. Yeah, we've got a long way to go for that. But as you said, the Senate bill passes, becomes law. There's some good chiropractic provisions in there. Absolutely. And this is important for our members to, rem to uh, keep in mind. Regardless of what you think about the complexion of this overall reform bill, whether you think it's good for the country or bad for the country, there are some historic uh, firsts in this Senate bill for the chiropractic profession. And I think most notably, for the first time in history, we will have the Congress on record saying essentially that discrimination against health care providers based on their scope of practice and their license is wrong. And this legislation, this non-discrimination provision that Tom Harkin and others helped mm -hmm. champion for us will become law. And it is it, it won't take care of everything in terms of leveling a playing field by no means. However, it is hugely significant and is a major step mm -hmm. forward. Uh, and, 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 and it's something we'll have to look forward to here, regardless of how you feel about other portions right, of le right. legislation. Very well put, my friend. Folks, please remember to support, get your friends, patients, family on Cairo Voice, www.cairovoice.org. Get your patients on their advocacy network. We're going to need that when this is all said and done. Oh, look, as recently as this morning, one of the medical specialty societies, in this case it happens to be the anesthesiologists, they just put out an alert bulletin to their members urging the House of Representatives to defeat the bill and one of the key areas they cite in the bill is our non-discrimination provision. They say this thing should be defeated because uh, of one of the provisions we've gotten in there. So. We can't rest on our laurels. We're going to have to keep up our fight, and all through the implementation process of when regulations are issued. we got a long haul to go uh, as this thing unfolds. And keep up with health care reform on our website, acatoday.org slash HCR, stands for health care reform, for all the latest news, talking points, and everything. Rick, uh, this is going to be uh, uh, a wild weekend. I think you can Absolutely. stay up here on Capitol Hill. We'll be up here, and uh, we'll see you around. Thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, John. God bless.